In this video we will create together a React sidebar that you for sure need in every single project. First of all, our sidebar won't need any libraries, and additionally it will be completely responsive. We will also use React Router for it, so we can jump between pages. Let's look on our initial project. Here is main tier 6, and as you can see, I use TypeScript for the whole application, because this is a modern and safe way to write React application. And we start in our main tier 6. We've wrapped our app component with browser router, because we're using React router to jump between pages. Additionally, here I imported global CSS. What is this? This are just some basic resets. And inside main tier 6, we are rendering our app. This is how it looks like. As you can see, it is not empty. So, what is the idea? This is our application where we are rendering left sidebar and some routes. And all our routes are wrapped with the element main. And here we have four routes dashboard, settings, pages, and products. This is how it looks on screen. It is completely empty. We see just left sidebar and main part. Why is that? Left sidebar is this component. As you can see, it is completely empty. But I already injected here CSS because it is prepared. We won't focus on CSS here, only on React. Additionally, we have our main component, exactly the same drill. It is completely empty. And we have our main CSS. As you can see from the code, left sidebar is obviously on the left, and we are rendering routes because they are different on every single page. But every single route is wrapped with our layout, which is a main component. This is why it's a parent route for all these four routes. And dashboard settings, pages, and products, these are just simple small components, so we can jump between pages. They don't have any meaningful content. And the last thing to mention is that inside index.html I added here font awesome because we need icons inside our application. So first of all, let's start with our left sidebar. As you can see, it is completely empty. We want to render here on the left our sidebar with all our links, which actually means first of all, we need here to store all items which we want to render in the sidebar. It will be an array with objects inside. And as a bare minimum, we want here a router link. For example, this will be a home page, then an icon that we want to render. I will use here a home icon. And the label that we want to render. In our case, it will be dashboard. This is enough information to render a link on the sidebar. Now I will do exactly the same for other pages. Here is products with FA box open and label products, then pages with a FA file and label pages, and settings with a FA cog and label settings. Our items are ready, now we can write markup for our left sidebar. And here will be div with class name side nav. Inside we will have a logo container, and here we need a button for the logo, because we can click on it. Here will be a class name logo with an icon inside. It will be a FA bars. After this, we need the name of our application, so it will be div with class name logo text. It will be app in our case, but you can change it for your needs. And a close button with class name button close. And inside the button, we will have an icon, FA times, and additionally close icon class. As you can see in browser, we successfully rendered our icon to toggle a sidebar, the name of our application, and a cross. After this div, let's render a class named side nav nav. And inside we need to loop through all our items to render a list. This is where let's map and we're getting access to every single item. And here we want to return a markup. First of all, we must provide here a key because we're mapping our items. And we can use label because this is a unique string in this case. And we need to add a class name side nav nav item. Inside the lib we want to render a link, and we are using here React Router DOM component link, and we need to provide first of all a class name inside, which will be side nav nav link, and two. And two option means to what route we want to redirect a user. In our case, we can read it from item dot router link. Inside our li, I want to render an icon with class name side nav link icon. And we also need here a span with our label. This is why here will be side nav link text. And inside we can render our item dot label. 
Our markup is fully ready, let's check this out. As you can see we got our four links, dashboard, product pages, we can even jump between pages, because our routes are already there, but we are missing icons, because here we didn't provide a specific icon, we need to add it here. But the main problem is that we want dynamically to add here a variable. Inside React you can write it like this, it is an ECMAScript 6 string, where inside you can just put space and then render a variable, for example item.icon. This code will work, you can see in browser, we are getting here icons, but this code is difficult to read and support, because you might have different logic for variables and concatenation of the string is not easy to read. This is why the recommended approach is to install an additional package. I want to install here a package class names, which will help us in structuring this code. So here on the top I want to import class names from class names, and now instead of this code that we wrote here, we can call a class names function and just provide inside an object. First key here will be side nav link icon, and the value will be true. It means that this class will be always there. And the second one will be item icon, and it will be also true. So this is how it looks like. Class names as a result will concatenate all these classes with its logic together. If here on the right is true, it will apply a class. If here you have false or some operation that returns false, the class won't be applied. And it is easier to read because we don't have weird concatenation of the string. As you can see in browser, it still works just like before, and we successfully rendered our labels and icons. Now we want to implement some logic regarding our sidebar. We need first of all to close it, and also to toggle. How can we do that? We need to think about state in our application. We might store this property inside left sidebar. But what will happen if our main part, for example, that we are rendering here on the right, also need to know if our sidebar is closed or not. It makes a lot of sense to store the state inside app, because this is a parent component for our left sidebar and for the main. This is why here I want to create a useState hook with value is left sidebar collapsed, and it means that it is closed. We also need here a setter, set is left sidebar collapsed, and we are using here a useState hook, which is a boolean, and by default it will be false, which means by default our sidebar is open. Now we can take this property and pass inside left sidebar. But as you can see it is red, TypeScript screams, because we don't have such prop inside our left sidebar. This is why here on the top I want to create a type for all props of our left sidebar. Let's create here a type, left sidebar props, and we have here for now just is left sidebar collapsed, and this is a boolean. Now we can destructure our props and say that this is of type left sidebar props. And we can read is left sidebar collapsed. Now we know in what state our left sidebar must be, but by default it is true and we need a possibility to close or toggle it. Let's first do close. Here is our close button and I want here a non-click event and I want to call a function close side nav. We don't have such function, so let's create it here on the top. And this is what will be called when we are closing our sidebar. So essentially this function must just call a callback to tell our parent component that sidebar must change its state. Which actually means here on the top we can say that inside our prop we need change is left sidebar collapsed. And it will be a function with value is left sidebar collapsed, which is boolean. And this function will return void. Which actually means this is our callback, we can read it here, and we must pass inside true or false. Now here our close side nav must be const, and inside we want to call change is left sidebar collapsed, and we simply provide inside false, which actually means this false is happening when we are clicking on cross, and then our parent will be notified, because this is our callback. So let's jump back inside our apt.s. Now here it is screaming, because inside left sidebar we didn't provide our callback. So we must provide here our callback, and this is just a function, where we are getting our value, it is either true or false, and we want to call set is left sidebar collapsed, and provide inside this value. Which actually means it simply updates this state that we created before. 
And in order to check that it is working, I want to console lock here our is left sidebar collapsed property. As you can see on initialize, we are getting false. Now we are clicking on our cross and nothing changes, which means our code is wrong. Let's jump back to left sidebar and here changes left sidebar collapsed must be set to true because we are closing the sidebar. Let's check again. I'm reloading the page, clicking on the cross and we're getting here true which means we successfully changed the state to true and now our sidebar knows that it must be closed, but we didn't apply this closing state to markup yet. So the first thing that we need to apply is here a class for the closing state. And I want to do this also with class names. So let's create here sidebar classes by calling class names. And we need to provide first of all sidenav class, it is always there, but also sidenav collapsed. And this class will be only there when is left sidebar collapsed is set to true. This function will concatenate for us all our classes with logic and we can apply them to our container. Let's check this out. Here is our sidebar. I'm clicking cross and as you can see it is toggled now. It is in the small state but we have problems. As you can see our labels are rendered and app with cross also which means we must apply some logic to hide them on the closed state. First of all, let's fix our labels. As you can see here, we're rendering a label of the item always. We don't want that. We want to render it only when our sidebar is not collapsed. So let's write here, if it is not collapsed, then we want to render the span. As you can see now, it looks much cleaner. We see just icons. And in the similar way, we want to render this content only when we are not collapsed. In order to do that, we must wrap this content with fragment because we will write logic. So here will be, if it is not collapsed, then here we want to render these two elements. But as you can see, we're getting a GSX error. It must have just a single parent. This is why we can wrap this code with fragment from React. Let's check if it's working now. I'm reloading the page. As you can see, app and cross is not rendered and we are on the closed state. Now it is time to implement toggle collapse so we can click on this icon and open our sidebar again. This is why here on the top, let's create a function toggle collapse and we don't need here any arguments and we just want to call change is left sidebar collapsed and we're providing inside the inverse variable not is left sidebar collapsed. Now here on our logo, we can add a non-click event and call our toggle collapse function. Additionally, here we need to add an arrow key because this is an arrow function. Let's check in browser. I am clicking on it and it is toggling our sidebar. So we successfully finished our sidebar, but what about main part? We don't see main component at all. Let's jump to the main and it will be much simpler than our sidebar. Here I want to return markup. It will be just a single div with class body and inside I want to render an outlet. And if you don't know what's outlet, this is a component from React Router DOM, which allows us to render dynamic information based on the route. Let's have a look. We don't really see our main, but if I'm closing the sidebar, here it is. We can even jump between different URLs and it works just fine. The main problem is that this component is not visible when our sidebar is opened which actually means we must apply different state based on the property is sidebar collapsed. This is why here inside main, I also want to define types. It will be our main props. And here we need is left sidebar collapsed. And it is a Boolean. Now here we can use this property and destructure it inside our props and say that this is our main props. And now here we need a different class when our sidebar is collapsed. This is why here on the top, we can again import our class names function. And here let's prepare a list of classes. We are calling here a class name function. And first of all, we need here body class, which is always there. It is true. And additionally, just for testing, I want to apply body trimmed class and also set it to true. There is more logic to it and you will see it in a second. Now, instead of this body, I can just apply classes so we can check if it's working. As you can see now on initialize, dashboard is on the right because this class was applied. But here is the problem. We want to return different class based on the screen width because we want to make it responsive. 
So additionally here in calculations, we need the screen width. This is why inside our app, I want to create one more state and it will be our screen width and set screen width. And we're using here your state and our screen width is a number and the default value we can do it from window.innerWidth. Now we can pass this screen width inside our main component as well as our is left sidebar collapsed. As you can see, as of now, our main does not accept screen width. We must add it to our types. So let's create here screen width. This is mandatory and it's a number and we can read it from our props. Now we can apply our body trim class only when sidebar is not collapsed and our screen width is bigger than 768. Let's check this out. After page reload, we see our element because body trimmed class is applied. When I'm clicking cross here, we apply just body because main doesn't need margin now. So we finished our side by end main, but we can do one more twist with resizing because essentially when we resize our page, it would be nice at some point to close our sidebar because it doesn't make any sense to see it open. It takes too much place and we can implement it inside our app component TS. Yes. So what I want to do here is to create a use effect and as a second parameter, we are providing no dependencies. So it will be done only once. And here we want a resize listener. This is why here window dot add event listener. Here will be a resize event and we want some function, for example, update size. Now here I want to create this function update size, which will be called every single time when we are resizing. Additionally, here we want to call this function on initialize. And we also want to remove a listener when our component is destroyed. This is why here I am returning a function which does window remove event listener and we are providing here resize and our update size function. Now when we are resizing the screen we want to set a new screen width inside. This is why here set screen width and we are just reading again window dot in width. And additionally here we might want to collapse our sidebar. This is why here let's check if our window dot inner width is smaller than 768. Then we want to set is left sidebar collapsed to true, which means we're closing it. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page, the sidebar is there. I am starting to resize my screen and at some point our sidebar will collapse exactly because of this code. How does it happen? We have a resize listener at the beginning, then this function is being called, we're setting a new screen width and additionally we're closing our sidebar at some point. Now it is closed and it is looking beautiful. And if you want to earn more money by using React, but you are not sure that you have enough skills to get a better job, I highly recommend you to check this video where I have lots of React interview questions and practical tasks.